Liam, we are late. Liam, we are live. We are live. We are not late. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> it is we were time. Late. We're live for the two blow bro the two bros wrestling show. <laughs> Liam's having a breakdown over there trying to record his videos. We have, we have multi multiple productions going on in the studio here tonight. <laughs> We have some you know, gaming going on over here. And, and, we have some and, wrestling going on over and here. Wrestling, wrestling. Um, I'm like six feet away from like a live live gaming stream, I think. So we're just doing it all here in the studio. What is happening, wrestling fans? What is happening, wrestling fans? Uh, Two Bros Wrestling Show, Doug, tonight is one of our bigger topics we have ever done. This We wanted to do a an entire show on the sale of wwe obviously the biggest news that we have seen in a very long time if ever in the modern age at least of professional wrestling and we're going to break it down we're going to break down the facts everything that we know and then speculate a little bit about those things that are still undecided and what this might mean for the future of professional wrestling um but before we even get any further into that not only thank you guys for joining and tuning in but Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. So if you if you're lucky enough to still have your mom and you haven't called her yet, why are you watching us? Get off. We'll be here when you get back. Call your mother. Call your mother. Right. What's what is wrong with you? Call your mother. What is wrong with you? And with that though, Doug, let's get to the let's opening bell. Let's talk about some more mothers in the news. I, I don't know if that's a segue <laughs> or not. I don't know if I set you up or not or just left you hanging. I don't know. We it seemed like the appropriate segue though. <laughs> We do have a lot of different things to cover from health news to a lot of programming news, but let's start as we did last week with uh, ticketing news. I know last week we talked AEW and, and uh, to be fair and balanced uh, uh, between the, the, uh, you know, um, the good, we will also have to present the not so good. So while it is uh, great that AEW is uh, all in in London, setting sales records, um, topping 60,000 seats sold. Um, that's not quite the case for Double or Nothing, which is here in just two weeks. In fact, uh, as of earlier this week, uh, over the last 30 days, they've only moved like 200 tickets in, in the last month. Um, so last year's Double or Nothing was set at 13,000 seats and it sold out. This year, they've lowered the capacity to 9,800 seats and they're still several thousand seats away from filling that. And as I said, only 200 over the last 30 days. Um, of course, it's not helped that they've only had through that one month period, one match really uh, that was known. Well, Maybe yeah. hopefully things will pick up once because uh, like this past week, they either announced a couple more matches as well as set the direction for a few presumable matches. So maybe that'll help them uh, get to a sellout. It'd be unusual for AEW to not have a pay-per-view sellout, especially as they're bragging about how many seats they're selling over in London if they don't sell out double or nothing. But, you know, here's the thing, though, man. I was thinking about this. I think we just saw it with Puerto Rico, too. Going to these underserved markets creates this huge surge of interest when, when you know, the market is actually there. Like, you know, going to Puerto Rico, clearly every major promotion should be doing something in Puerto Rico. And sure. really taking a show to London, you know, these U U.S. based wrestling companies need to take things overseas. You know, what was it? The, the clash of the castle. Now we've got this at Wembley, you know, these things sell out. These are underserved markets. So you know, I'm not saying calling out underserved market would show though, that double or nothing takes place in the exact same market every single year. Right. Could that hurt it. Could it hurt it? That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, we're going back there every year. We keep going back to the well. Yeah, maybe we yeah. start moving to we like I. You know, oh, Sorry. it's okay. That's that, that frightened me. <laughs> yeah, if you if you have any pull with Tony, let him know that uh, you say no more double or nothing in Las Vegas. It doesn't need that for the theme. Maybe Atlantic City. Well, they have gambling right. other places now. Right. Uh, well, of course, that Mohegan Sun Casino that WWE <laughs> used to go to all the time. There Let's we go. take it there. You know, let's take casino. not a monkey casino. No. <laughs> we we got a little double or nothing. Uh, well, more AEW news. Let's talk about the part in AEW that is the worst kept secret, and that is, of course, the not yet announced but strongly, strongly hinted at um, collision. Collision. This, yeah, this past week, Dynamite uh, Tony Khan hyped a special announcement, 
and the reason that the announcement is happening next week, and that is what he was hyping, is this uh, brand extension. Uh, the holdup is the fact that next week are the upfronts, and that's when networks and streamers who have ad-supported tiers, which is pretty much all of them now, present their yeah. upcoming program slates to potential advertisers. So Warner Brothers Discovery will make their pitches uh, on Wednesday at Madison Square Garden in, in the Hulu Theater. And you can bet Dynamite uh, that <laughs> night is going to have plenty of footage uh, from that day's events to, to highlight. So that's what the, the holdup has been. Doug, we got some health news, and we'll go AEW uh, first, too, because uh, Eddie Kingston, we're, we're fans of Eddie around these parts. Yeah, absolutely. Been working through a hernia issue, been bothering him for a while now, but he has now finally decided that he can't keep working through it, had a surgical fix. At the recent ROH tapings at Orlando's Universal Studios, he informed the crowd he was having the surgery uh, this past week, and he's expected to be back in around six weeks, would put him shortly before the uh, AEW uh, New Japan Wrestling Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Um, might not be enough time to get him booked on that program, but uh, best of luck to for the Mad King to get well and get back on that show. More health, health news, Doug. It's been more than a year since we've seen Bobby Roode. Uh, he's not been in a match in more than... Or his than, mustache. <laughs> I or, think Vince stole his mustache. <laughs> or half of his mustache. Roode's got a nice mustache. <laughs> Um, so rude as it turns out, uh, when, when we knew he had a long health journey and it wasn't be, really being overly open about it, as it turns out, it's, it's still going to be quite the long health journey. He's had not one, but two spinal fusion surgeries. Mm -hmm. The, the most recent one being this past week on his 46th birthday. Happy birthday, right? Happy birthday. Uh, Here's a spinal fusion. That's going to mean though, that it'll be some time I'm sure before we see the glorious one back in the wrestling ring. So uh, good luck to you, Bobby, and to get back quick and hopefully back in the ring, but 46 second spinal fusion. It's getting iffy, you know, it is, but at least half his mustache is still on TV every week or at least in <laughs> wrestling news every week. <laughs> That's right. Half only. <laughs> hey Doug, last week you and I, we were debating whether or not Brock Lesnar's crimson mask was a blade job or the hard uh -huh. way. Well, one thing we know for sure this week, it may have still been the hard way, but it definitely was planned. Multiple outlets are reporting and, and others have confirmed that the use of blood was allowed and approved. Um, it's been noted in these reports that this does not change WWE's general policy towards blading or blood in matches. It's just an indication that Brock Lesnar has different rules. So once again, it's, it's, a, it's not okay for everybody unless your name is Brock. That's maybe it's part of being a free agent. You can bleed if you're a free agent. Wait, so Omos and Von Wagner and, and all those other people can bleed. Yeah. If you didn't get drafted, you could bleed. Huh. Okay. I'm cool with that then. So uh enough about Brock Lesnar's forehead, Doug. What do you say we switch gears and talk about Matt Riddle's penis? <laughs> I was not ready for that segue. <laughs> but let's do it. I'm always ready to talk about that. So Riddle was trending uh, during uh, during Raw on Monday night, even though he wasn't appearing on Raw on Monday night. No, the reason he was trending was due to a viral video that apparently has been leaked showing Riddle, um, how should we say, uh, pulling out his little bro and whipping it around like a helicopter. He was helicoptering <laughs> Hey, I'm just. Oh, this is news. I'm just reading the news here. But you know, um, this is a, 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 this is a wrestling pastime amongst male wrestlers. I mean, I think you know Ric Flair famously helicoptering on the plane ride from hell. Right, <laughs> the helicopter almost, of of your little bros in old NWA movies. It's just a, it's a heritage. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's just paying tribute to those who came before him. <laughs> Obviously, in the different day and age, this has caused some outrage online, and a cancel riddle hashtag has, has began uh, trending. Riddle's ex-girlfriend took the opportunity to jump into the online fray, supporting the cancellation of the original bro and saying she hopes that he goes back to rehab for what she uh, calls his sex addiction. addiction. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, the tape is something that Riddle didn't intend to be out there it's a leak someone's you know it was obviously filmed for an individual who has uh leaked this or someone's come across it but either way uh wwe has not yet officially addressed it nor has riddle but um they may soon be forced to because of the whole cancel riddle thing and and riddle 
it should be noted, just uh, got back uh, and just returned after WrestleMania bro. to WWE because of a drug suspension. So hard times for the original bro. If only it was Lesnar. I mean, if you only if only he were a free agent, you know. <laughs> you're allowed to do that if you're a free agent or, or Ric Flair. <laughs> Oh, Ric Flair. Pretty sure there's stories about Randy Orton welcoming new people to the uh, locker room like that, too, floating around. So just different times. <laughs> it is a, it is kind of disturbing how often this is a theme in wrestling. But uh, it is. Yeah. This day and age, we got a cancel Riddle thing going on. We'll see if WWE or, or, or Riddle himself either chooses to or is forced to address it. Um, more bad news this time, not that bad, but this is, I guess, bad for Colby Carino as far as his career uh, goes. Son of, of uh, Steve Carino became a free agent at the start of 2023. It was widely reported, even by us here on the Two Bros show, that Colby was WWE bound because it was all but said and done. Um, now Carino has weighed in in an interview as to why he hasn't uh, debuted and his status. So, yes, WWE was interested in signing him to NXT. And according to Carino, it was just a formality to be signed pending a background check. Uh, Colby mm-hmm. said he was not worried about the check because he'd undergone one a few years before from WWE and when he first tried out for them. And they also were aware of things that would appear uh, on his background check and that he then, though, grew concerned when um, there was a lack of communication on WWE's part as his start date approached. And so Carino claims he was supposed to be moving his family to Florida on a Sunday. But the Monday before he got the call, there was something that was flagged from seven years back. And he uh, he stated that he needed to go take care of this and then he could sign his contract. And then apparently WWE just ghosted him. So um, this hmm. news came yeah, it, it came the Monday before he was set to like move his entire family that, hey, there's a problem. You need to address it. And then he never heard back from them. So uh, essentially now he says that the offer is no longer on the table. There's been a lot that happened, though, between while, while he was waiting on that background check, WWE is pretty much in a hiring freeze uh, pending the sale and all that stuff. So I think he's a victim of bad timing. So it's not on the table now that doesn't you know handle your business right and who knows in the future that door may reopen uh but for now wwe has rescinded its offer and carino is now in limbo hope is that there's uh maybe still a chance down the road for him either that or that really big announcement that tony made an announcement about having an announcement for this week is about him <laughs> hey we don't know what it is right i mean what could it be what could it be <laughs> well wait we, we can't talk collision yet doug but we do have a lot of uh programming news so i want to end on some positive news and that's more wrestling more wrestling themed programming uh w uh, mlw announced that their mlw fusion is going to return to youtube may 25th the mlw underground program airs on reels so fans of the product without access to reels or if you had reels through Peacock, which meant like WWE wouldn't let you watch MLW. Um, Now you have access to MLW again. And now that they're going back wide with programming on a weekly basis with the next season on YouTube. Wait, wait, what is, is reels like a streaming network? Are we talking about like Instagram reels? (laughs) No, reels is a, reels is a linear network that recently got added to Peacock as well. It's one of the fastest growing networks in the country. So it was a good deal for MLW until Peacock picked them up. And then WWE said, Hey, you can't do that on, on, on Peacock. We got a contract, no more wrestling other than us. Same thing that got him with the Tubi deal that, uh, you know, uh, Vince is determined to put MLW out of business, I think. Um, Not Reels, Doug, but Heels is getting ready to return for its second season. It was just announced the Stars drama is slated to start back in July. And yes, CM Punk will once again appear as a recurring character. And this season, so does his real life wife, AJ Lee. Apparently, she also has a a role on Heels, which... For those fans who haven't watched it, uh, Doug and I, but two thumbs up from the, the bros on, on Heels. I love, love Heels. What's Punk's character's name? Rock, Rabbit? Randy? Randy or something? Yeah, it's something Randy. <laughs> Rancid or Rabbit or something like that. Rancid Randy or something, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Hey, the last bit of programming news I had is NBC put out their fall schedule, and notably absent was the semi-autobiographical Young Rock, which is a, a, also a great, a very different than Heels, but also a very great show. <laughs> um, don't necessarily fret too much. The word is it's kind of on the bubble. It's not canceled. It's just uh, there's hope for it to come as back for one final season, maybe as a mid-season replacement. So the axe has not fallen on the show yet, but it didn't get a uh, fall pickup. So let's keep our fingers crossed that we at least get to see them finish young rock. Maybe young Roman shows up at some point. <laughs> Actually he did as a kid. Actually he did as a kid. Now that I think about it. Um, That's great. But anyway. Man, it's hard times for Dwayne the rock Johnson right now. First, like that whole black Adam stuff. And then I know. And, and, and now this, I know all of his pro. I mean, he was gold, and now all of his projects not getting picked up or canceled. I mean, who, A- who XFL would have struggling, it? struggling through their second season. <laughs> yeah, uh, go watch the Rock stuff, folks. The, the man needs your help. It is good. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock needs, our, <laughs> folks. The Rock, the Rock needs, needs our help. help. <laughs> With that, Doug, are you ready to talk about uh, the sale of WWE to Endeavor? I, I am so ready to talk about the sale. Because I found I found the news article that we were talking about before we went on air, although it, was, okay. it may not be from the most reliable source. Not to say this source isn't reliable, but it's not exactly a wrestling source. But we'll go with it. We will, we will go with it. Um, so the sale of WWE is something that uh, obviously we had talked about for a long time, and then when it comes. Uh, It happens while we are on uh, a hiatus. So, Doug, before we even get into the facts of this deal, were you just even a bit surprised by how quickly it it came? Didn't you think that this would probably be a process that would drag on longer than it actually did? Absolutely. But, you know, I think, you know, in both our minds, there was this thought that Vince is coming back to sell the company that, you know, there's already something just about done. You know, there's there's almost a bow on something. I think every every conspiracy theorist, every old mark (laughs) out there was thinking, okay, there's there's almost a done deal or he would not have come back so quickly and things are moving fast. But uh, and I think the company's been set up for well over a year before Vince retired yeah that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then unretired uh, then unretired but you know i think there's been some time there where the the company is being set up and being positioned in a way that for sale so but it happening so fast absolutely yeah um so let's it's talk okay. about the you know exactly what we do know for certain we got some facts and figures oh, here this we got some graphics on the Two Bros Wrestling Show. It's a big show. We're going to we we like this show to look professional. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the buyer, Doug, and it is not the country of Saudi Arabia. So the fact that it is Endeavor Group Holdings, shouldn't we maybe at, at least give some um, kudos to, to WWE for for that? Is this a, in some ways uh, a relief as opposed to what at one point we we thought was close to being a done deal? It is, but you know, it scares me that you know they're cool with this you know, alleged serial sex offender that looks, as has been pointed out by some folks, <laughs> like a, a French vampire. <laughs> Stay in charge. I mean, that bothers me that 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 this man is still there, and they're cool with him being there, and apparently he will be there until he dies now, before he gives up his control. But I, it is definitely better than Saudi. It is definitely better than the Kingdom of Saudi and their their public relations arm getting WWE. So as you just uh, alluded to, Vince is not necessarily going anywhere, even though we need to be clear about the fact that for the first time in roughly 70 years, the WWE is no longer controlled by the McMahon family. So... Mm-hmm. I mean, it is a sale, but Vince is still involved. And we'll break down exactly what that means, because I know a lot of folks thought, oh, Vince is back. He's an old man who got kicked out for his indiscretions. He's back to help with the sale, and then he'll be gone again. That's Mm -hmm. not exactly the way that it worked out, and surely not the way that Vince McMahon uh, was planning for it to work out. I think this is more along the lines of what he was thinking all along. 
I do too. And I think that goes back around to the whole conspiracy thing about, you know, was he, was he cooking something, you know, because yeah. I mean, even though he left, he still had control of the company through his shares. So was he cooking something up on the back end all along and then just, just setting the table. So Endeavor could come in or the kingdom of Saudi or whoever could come in. Cause I'm sure he was courting multiple, multiple sources that would allow him to stay at, at, at the head of the table. So let's hit that second bullet when we talk shares and ownership. Pause. Yes, Endeavor does, in fact, own WWE now. The arrangement is they own 51% of the company. And that means that the other 49% are, are the current WWE stockholders that own the rest. Of course, as you just pointed out, Doug, the largest shareholder is Vince himself. Um, but who is Endeavor? Uh, I had no idea. I mean, there was a lot mm -hmm. of folks that were in play that we talked about when we, we were discussing where this could go. And, uh, you know, your Amazons, your Disney's, all the names. And then it's like Endeavor. What's an Endeavor? So Endeavor is a Beverly Hills based holding company uh, for talent and, and media uh, agencies, probably best known, at least until recent years, for having the renowned William Morris Talent Agency. Uh, it merged with uh, William Morris in 2009, and then they ventured out of just Hollywood and entertainment and into the world of combat sports in 2016 when they made the splash to purchase. Uh, and it was shocking in the world of UFC at the time, but they, they purchased UFC. Uh, they remained aggressive, and then they went public themselves in 2019. Um, so what is Endeavor, now that we know what – who they are, what do you think they are going to do with WWE? Some of that is speculation, but things that we do know based on just UFC is that they tend to be a sort of silent partner. Like they want, let the business run themselves. And we are that holding company that just uh, is in the background. I don't know if that'll play out in WWE or not, but in interviews, that's the way they make it sound like, Hey, not a whole lot's going to change. Um, but they're aggressive, so this might not be the end for them. They might continue to gobble up uh, combat sports or other sports and put into their portfolio of entertainment companies. It certainly seems that they've let Dana White continue to run his company, just like it appears they're going to let Vince McMahon continue to run his you know, combat sports company, even though his combat sports company is scripted with pretty I mean, covered it, outcomes. It, it is worth... Uh, paying attention to how UFC has pretty well remained at least to the, to the public on the surface end of things yeah. the same. So in some ways, I'm guessing that's good. If you're not wanting to see a ton of changes or a WCW situation with back in the day with time Warner coming in and getting involved in wrestling operations, even though they knew nothing about wrestling. I mean, if you're going to, regardless what you think about Vince McMahon, take McMahon out of it himself. But this think of the Dana White example to let the people that know that business continue to run that business and not get in and meddle with it uh, is probably better than the opposite, which we did see in WCW to disastrous exactly. results in the end. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. We don't want the guys who don't know the wrestling business trying to run the wrestling business. <laughs> now, some of the things we do know is that uh, as far as Endeavor's plans for WWE, and that is that they do plan to take their two combat sports and combine them into a singular company. So they are going to combine UFC with WWE and for an event, it, it would make for a $21 billion global live sports and entertainment company. Uh, and Doug, I know that one of the things they said is that they would be finding a new name for this. And, and I know that uh, you've heard <laughs> the, of some rumors of what that name might be. So I found this on comicbook.com, but it is all backed up with an SEC filing that they uh, they cite here via PW Insider that the <laughs> the acquisition of the WWE and the UFC will live under a new LLC named New Whale Incorporated. New Whale. That's what they're going to call it, at least at least for now. You but got an ultimate fighting whale. on one side and you got uh, professional wrestling on the other and whale is the common ground there. New Whale Incorporated. This comes from corporate filings of the SEC via PW Insider and the filing also states that upon the merger's completion, a new name will re be revealed for the company. However, it's currently being referred to as New Whale. 
Well, maybe that then is just uh, a, a placeholder. It's just a place, uh, placeholder, but yeah. nevertheless. <laughs> Until we come up with something way better than that. Um, but $21 billion company. Um, so with this transaction, they had to be evaluated. UFC was valued at $12.1 billion. WWE had a valuation of $9.3 billion. Doug, I remember when we talked about this, you scoffing at reports Vince was asking for $9 billion. Uh, he got it plus an uh, extra 300000 for hush money to be paid for <laughs> sexual assault allegations, apparently. <laughs> apparently so. <laughs> yeah. were, you, were you surprised in the grand scheme of things that the man got even more than he wanted? Because at the time oh, you thought I that that was a... Ridiculous I absolutely number. was because you know i mean i don't look at like sports ball things though and think about like the touring and, and all that you know i was comparing the tv product to say like, like the, the star wars franchise this franchise is worth you know four billion to disney to give it to george lucas for that you know but i guess that the wwe of course, what would george over, get out of it today time. you know the, well yeah the, that's I true mean, I mean, the the cost that anyone who's gone to a store knows the cost of everything's gone up. And that includes media uh, and, and yeah. media companies and, and the days of streaming when live content is king. Uh, you can ask a king's ransom and apparently you can also get it. <laughs> apparently so. And, and bonus. <laughs> and bonus. Yeah. Extra money. Uh, Doug, the CEO of the of the new combined company, is going to be Ari Emanuel, and Ari is the uh, CEO of Endeavor. So he technically is the boss now. But Vince, as you said earlier, will remain as WWE chairman, um, and then Endeavor will be appointing six board seats, and WWE will be able to appoint five board seats to this uh, new company. So. Endeavor will have one more vote at the table when all is said and done. But I guess before we begin spelling out the, you know, all of these facts and, and what it means and reactions from you, uh, you obviously were surprised it happened soon. Uh, of the potential suitors, did you think that Saudi had the inside track? Were you expecting? Obviously, none of us saw Endeavor coming. We, we didn't know. I, I, you know what? I think we've talked about this off air. I was totally terrified that Saudi was going to, yeah, you know, man. pick pick this up. I, I really was. I thought that's the way this was going. That you know, Sami Zayn was on his out and, and on his way out the door, <laughs> and now <laughs> Saudi and Syria are like buddying up and talking. Sami's going to Saudi Arabia with Ko. <laughs> you know, dogs and cats are cuddling together. <laughs> it's 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 a brave new world. <laughs> I mean, Ari Emanuel was asked about, uh, hey, are, are you all going to continue the relationship with Saudi Arabia? And it was more of a, hey, you know, that this has been good for the country and for freedom, you know, all the talking points. So it seems like Endeavor is not going to change the course on those sorts of things. And I know you, as you pointed out at the top of the show that, you know, there is the problem of Vince McMahon himself, which apparently was a problem for some potential suitors. But um, Vince, when asked, uh, you know, if it was his plan to stick around, he basically, you know, it's Vince. He, he, he talked about how, well, I was considering walking away and then Ari interrupted and said, but I wouldn't let him. Um, so it seems like they're cozy enough that Vince McMahon, whether he, truly was planning to walk away or not. I, I really have my doubts. I know you do as well, but it definitely mm -hmm. looks like Endeavor is fine with him sticking around. Yeah. yeah they're, they're like, you know, like you said, it's a holding company. They, they buy up profitable profit properties to make them more profitable and make them make themselves money for their investors. I mean, it is a business. I get that. And, you know, apparently a couple of suitors were fine with the way business is done in the past at WWE allegedly. So yeah, Vince stays on as chairman. Ari's the new CEO. Uh, Nick Khan is still uh, acting as uh, president of WWE, and it's expected that he will stay. That has not yet been confirmed. Uh, but, Doug, what do you think about UFC and WWE being combined? Um, you know, it's not like we're going to change to an octagon or we're going to have UFC fights in the middle of WWE programming. <laughs> I mean, the company's going to get a new name. That'll be one change, but supposedly – you know, it's it's really more that we traded on the New York Stock Exchange uh, uh, together uh, more than any other changes. Do you do you 
do you have any concerns about UFC and WWE being a combined company? I don't really think so. I think they will stay in their le- in their respective lanes with the expected amount of crossover now that they have like an entire UFC roster that they could, you know, tra- trade with and, you know, bring somebody besides Rousey or Lesnar or, or true. <laughs> uh, you know, they they can bring over you know have some more more crossover promotional things, but I think I think both these companies will stay in their respective lanes. One yeah. like legitimate combat sports, and the other you know scripted you know sports entertainment. Especially There's, for the one brand that isn't scripted, if they get too cozy and close with the scripted side of things, right. it, it could draw some negative attention to their product as to whether or not their outcomes Absolutely. are legitimate. They don't want to be questioned in that regard. So uh, it is very much expected that despite being one company, they will remain ran as if they were two, but they will supposedly also be seeking separate TV deals. Um, I think where the combination probably is going to, other than being traded together, which apparently four to six months, once the deal is done, it's expected they'll debut on the New York stock exchange. But I think one other thing that you can expect to see from uh, them working together is things like sponsorship, uh, monetization, right. uh, yeah. strategic mergers and acquisitions with other, you know, promotions, tape libraries, uh, combat mm-hmm. sports companies. Uh, uh, Nick Khan also hinted that while the TV deals uh, for WWE and UFC will still be sought separately, but that a combined streaming deal in the future is a possibility. Uh huh. So I think it's like Peacock's deal with WWE comes up in 2026. I think US sees on ESPN, I think, and that's like next year. So by 2026, if you wanted to have like, you know, your own uh, streaming service or you, if, if you wanted to carte blanche on Amazon, want to like take UFC and WWE, like I think that obviously when you're $21 billion, you could probably swing a better streaming deal together. And even if you bucket that content separately, so they may do the whole streaming deal uh, as a combo. I, I would not mind that at all to get to U- UFC events the same way, you know, we consume like stuff on Peacock. You know, yeah. I would not mind that at all for those major, major UFC events being able to just pay my, you know, monthly fee and get all my WWE stuff and my UFC stuff. I would actually be cool with that. Do you see this all then as upside UFC, WWE, or do you see any potential issues at all from them being one company? I, you know, I think this is a place where we're, we're going to see the brand split remain a, a brand split. We're not going to see a lot of cross pollination other than us talking about it. I think the general public is never going to know these two things are associated. You know, re- there are wrestling fans. There are people out there that just aren't going to know that the WWE and the UFC or if they know now a year from now, unless it's, it's made a big deal about <laughs> Endeavor, which we didn't know about, you yeah. know, until they bought you know, it, it, it will lay low and, and WWE is going to be WWE. UFC is going to be UFC, except to us, Marks. If you're, if you're, maybe it's another reason to go for a nondescript, uh, non nonsensical name like Great Well or something that gives no indication as to what it actually is. <laughs> oh, that's true. Cause I, I, I really expect something that, you know, highlights the, you know, the, the combat element of both of these, you know, competitions you know again yes our our wrestling is predetermined and scripted but they're still athletes you know so before we move though into the whole speculation game and and some like uh armchair uh prognosticating let's look at that last bullet point because that's the biggie the the fact that vince Mm -hmm. is remaining the wwe chairman so let's look at the facts exactly as to what this means so the clever old man not only talked his way out of his scandal back in the wwe before the sale he's now pretty much ensconced himself as the head of the wwe portion of this company uh, especially if endeavor is reportedly very uh, passive in their ownership Mm -hmm. um but it still does mean at the end of the day, for the first time, Vince has bosses now. Uh, he still wields a lot of control, but not complete control, which is going to be new for him. Endeavor's 51%. The remaining 49% is WWE shock, uh, shareholders. It's Vince who owns the majority of those. It is to the tune of 
uh, 28.7 million shares, mostly in what are considered a super voting class of shares. However, when the sell goes through, those super voting shares convert to regular equity when the deal closes. So the end result is that Vince McMahon, the WWE's controlling shareholder, will own about 19% of the yet-to-be-named merged company of UFC and WWE. Not insignificant, but not mm -hmm. carte blanche, do what I want to do, which is very much what Vince McMahon is used to. That might be where eventually you see these uh, huggy, kissy, we're all loving unicorn relationships start to break down the first time Vince McMahon gets told he can't do something. So, you know, I, I wonder, because they, they, they didn't buy a pig in the poke. They know what they just bought. They're, they're aware of the scandals. If they have lawyers that are done, have done any due diligence before the purchase of this, <laughs> you know, they know what they bought. They know what comes along with it. But I think they also see the potential to make money. And as long as Vince is making money with his decisions and driving the ship in a profitable way, I think his corporate overlords that he has now will be all right with him doing what he's been doing as long as the payoffs allegedly come from his own bank account in the future and not the corporate account. So you think that in the same way that we as fans and, and maybe not the hardcore marks that pay attention to the business side, the way that we won't notice any changes, do you think that a 19% ownership of the company um, that Vince McMahon will see any changes in the way that he operates? Or do you think that uh, that 19% is enough to keep him pretty much being the way that he is used to being in regards to running WWE? I really think it'll be he will run things the way he's always ran things. And I think that's why they're like, no, here, you can you can stay. You keep doing your thing. You got it to this point to where, you know, we're, we have this valuation between these two properties now, of like, you know, almost 22 billion. So, you know, you you, <laughs> you exactly. So you, you do you. And when you, you do and you starts losing us money, we'll reconsider this relationship. And it's, until that point, I think Endeavor and the people who are sitting on the boards will be fine as long as there's nothing that publicly shames Endeavor. And again, I think Endeavor is willing to take a, some public shame knowing what they've got themselves into and why Vince left in the first place. So I think they're they're willing to swallow a little bit of pride there. You know, maybe I have a black eye in, in, in the public for a little while. And look the other way for things that pop up. And, you know, we're already seeing things like almost getting a push. You know, that's not coming from Triple H creative. <laughs> so to the point about they're willing to take a black eye, it's not like they haven't been down this road. Okay, he's not French vampire level uh, weird and creepy, but Dana White has had his share <laughs> exactly. of controversy. It's not like he's exactly. a... a uh, a, a wallflower of any sort. He he shoots off at the mouth. He's controversial. He rubs people the wrong way. They obviously are they're, fine they're for being in a... business with one brash millionaire, uh, testosterone driven like muscle head, which Vince yeah, McMahon absolutely. also is very much in the same school. Um, I mean, in some ways that th th we can look at UFC as the model for how they will handle Vince McMahon in the way that they've handled mm -hmm. Dana White. Yeah, because uh, Dana White, I believe, has had some you know, allegations thrown his way, too. Uh, but, you know, make us money and, you know, make us money and don't make us look too bad. Let's talk money. While we're talking money, I know we're kind of already uh, out of the things we definitely know. Uh, who's going to hold what positions and how much shares are, are owned and how much money and all this stuff. Let's talk about some of the things we don't know for sure. And that is off the bat, the biggie is TV rights. Uh, when when Emmanuel admitted uh, that these things are coming up soon, but that talks hadn't started yet, uh, WWE and UFC are going to go after separate TV deals. And then you obviously have uh, what I had mentioned earlier, that there's the possibility that we could go for uh, a, a combined streaming deal. Um, do you think that they're going to, as a combined company, even if they do have separate rights deals, just the fact that we have a, a steady partner, that the sale still isn't on the table, uh, do you think that that means that you can go to USA and say, hey, we'd love 
thank you for the decades of partnership, but you're going to have to really pony up now. Do you think that this puts them in a stronger position to negotiate? Are they giddy? Uh, are they going to do better numbers? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, you were joking with me about, you know, Vance getting his, you know, nine when I think he should get no more than four. And I love wrestling. I also love Star Wars. But <laughs> he got, you know, $9.3 billion. So you know, the valuation is is there. And I, I, I think there's negotiating power that they're bringing with them to whatever they do now. And also just, just sprinkling those, those – uh, seeds of a a blossoming you know streaming platform for both of these properties you know getting that out there who could possibly want that well you know you give us a good tv deal and we could you know go ahead and and consider getting in bed with you with something bigger the streaming or maybe we take all that to peacock or you know there's there's negotiations there you're they're laying negotiation groundwork for future negotiations like you're talking about the streaming thing so yeah which comes yeah. up to even fat. I mean, the TV rights right. first, but yeah, ESPN does air UFC's pay per views. I have that here on ESPN Plus. That that ends in 2025. Uh, Peacock part of as part of NBC Universal. The WWE streaming deal with them comes to end end in 2026. So it, pretty close together. Your two big properties now. Your one big combined company uh, could go mm-hmm. for an even bigger all in. Right? Uh, no, no, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, streaming deal. Um, so obviously we did touch on the scandal thing. Uh, Manuel, uh, Ari was asked about McMahon's scandal and he just brushed it off. So I do think that nothing's going to change on the Endeavor side. On the Vince side, he is getting older. He just got a ton of money. He kind of came back, got what he wanted. Do you think he leans back, reaps in the money, or does he go back to being as much of a all powerful force as this new structure will allow him to be? So, I think we get something somewhere in the middle. I know that's that's a very safe answer, but I think we do get something somewhere in the middle because we've both read and seen multiple reports that Vince isn't traveling with TV right now, but he's still incredibly active with it. So, you know, he's he's enjoying some time with a lot more money doing whatever, you know, evil French vampires do <laughs> when they're when they're not rewriting scripts for, you know, television that's already on the air. But so that's the old school way. Every day you show up uh, Monday afternoon and the script that everyone is getting ready to enact that night on TV gets ripped up by Vince McMahon and he yells, screams, cusses a bunch of people out and then up to and sometimes during the program itself, things are hurriedly being rewritten. Let's talk creative. Uh, most fans, obviously, that is where we're going to see is the most important thing because that's what's mm-hmm. going to be on our screens. If that doesn't change a whole lot, we aren't going to notice what exactly is happening in the corporate end of things. Uh, we know Vince says he is only back involved at the highest levels of creative is what he said when asked if he's plans on getting involved in creative. He said that back the, in the day when he was in the weeds, he no longer has the time or desire or the energy to get back to doing that like before. But only at the highest levels is he involved mm-hmm. in creative. Um, that leaves Triple H, at least on paper, as head of w, uh, WWE creative. Do you think mm-hmm. that Vince McMahon, uh, first, do you believe Vince? And how long will it last that he stays out of the weeds, as it were? So here's the thing at this point. I don't think anybody personal opinion should believe vince mcmahon (laughs) asking vince mcmahon a question is like asking any marvel actor and trying to get information out of them about their next movie they're going to lie (laughs) it's a lot i really yeah i don't know i don't remember yeah it's going to happen unless it's tom holland (laughs) but no don't no, I don't believe Vince McMahon. I don't even remember what the rest of that question was, but no, I don't believe Vince McMahon. <laughs> I mean, if he couldn't he'd be trusted, then he goes and makes himself look like someone who obviously shouldn't be t- trusted. You know, <laughs> he totally looks if like he didn't Superman. look like if he didn't look like a cartoon villain anyway. You know. like a twirl. <laughs> exactly. Um, so if Vince does not stay out of the weeds and does not, as he says, only at the highest level remain involved in creative. Um, what's the long-term future for Triple H in this scenario? Does he try to outlive his father-in-law at this point? Or do, do you think that eventually it gets to the point that uh, we get a 
you know, situation like with other members of the McMahon family. Uh, we can't just work together anymore. And, and Triple H gets forced out of the company. I know we're speculating here a real long term, but do you think Triple H, um, having done what most fans consider a great job in taking over the books, do you think if he doesn't have that same control going forward that eventually he gets at loggerheads with the old man and has to has to leave? You know, he may bump heads, but again, I think it comes down to ratings and money because that is what's going to keep a leash, a, a tight leash on Vince. As long as he meddles and tries to put Omos in like a main event, but Triple H has a great mid card and upper mid card to get us through and, and have us watching and buying t shirts and, and, and paying our Peacock subscriptions. Oh, sorry, I was distracted by a, a, a text. But as long as you know, we're doing that, you know, I. I think the the balance stays. You know, we may get some crappy high end creative, like in main events, but yeah, you know, everything I think will will be there. So when you say that Vince, uh, when when you when you hear Vince say, "I only am going to be involved at the highest level," do you do you think that doesn't mean uh, just certain things or just uh, I, I'm going to pay attention? Do you think that that actually means I'm only going to be involved in the main event stuff and? Hey, Sean and Triple H can do whatever they want in NXT. No, I don't watch. <laughs> you think that's what yeah, it means? I, I, re I really think so because you're going to have Vince, you know, pushing the guys who oldest on Moscow. He's tall. Let's push him. You know, <laughs> Theory, I think he should be pushing Theory. Theory's great, yeah, but you, know, you still yeah. have that. But, you know, I think, you know, we're going to see those Vince big guys and, and it's going to be oh, Lesnar. Lesnar said when Vince left that, you know, you don't want anybody else uh -huh. booking in. Yep. And as soon as Vince came back, I'm sure, you know, Lesnar said, I want Vince booking the shows. Yep. You know, so, and I'm sure Vince is doing that for Lesnar. So anything involving Lesnar, I bet if, if Taker were still around, it'd be anything involving Taker. Yeah, well, supposedly Rock and and Vince have been talking. I mean, you know, somebody asked Rock about that, and and he said, "Oh, I've been talking to Vince." So I mean, you know, the the main eventers definitely have a relationship, and, yeah. and want to you know are going to continue that. Um, obviously, there was a lot of drama uh, over last year with Stephanie's WWE retirement yeah. return, ascension, and then sudden retirement again last right. year. So now that this is the lay of the land and the sale is happening, do you ever foresee her being able to find her way back into the family business? Or is is this a uh, probably Vince sticking around a, a pretty good indication that Stephanie remains on the sidelines? I think we saw a final straw situation when Stephanie originally left. Uh, you know, we will never know what that final straw was. I mean, we can presume it was like multiple allegations starting to snowball and then Vince and then Stephanie first leaving, then coming back to basically, you know, be the hero of the family after Vince retires. But then as soon as Vince comes back, you know, there's that that weird Stephanie's out when Vince is here. This is a, then, Yeah. So. This is a, this would be a scenario where I could yeah, see we, a Stephanie McMahon come back because it was the makeup of the former board uh -huh. that wanted Stephanie in charge. And obviously when Vince basically did the coup that he did to get rid of those opposed to him, that's when Stephanie herself decided to leave. So these issues are tied together. If uh -huh. it is something that, and again, Endeavor has one more board vote than WWE. In another scenario where, okay, this guy, we can't stand him any longer. He's not going to be able to poach those that he doesn't want and put loyalists on the board. He can only do that up to four votes. And the majority of the votes are they're going to be folks that will be more independent. So he might not have enough votes mm -hmm. to save him uh, if there are truly folks who do not like working with Vince McMahon. I still, I still think it's going to have to be something huge for Vance to. Get, it's going to have to be a huge money loss or some huge, huge scandal. And I'm not even sure what that could be now, considering what the man has <laughs> yeah. I mean, gotten away with. I mean, done. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, Allegedly. he might as well. You know, might as well have a, a a national insurrection on the on the day when you're supposed to certify an election. <laughs> That's his friend. That's somebody else. <laughs> oh my bad. <laughs> So no Stephanie as long as there's Vince. Is that what we that, that's, my, that's, that. that's the way that's it feels. My vibe. Yeah. Shane? Shane? 
I know Shane was never involved on the business side. He's more of a character. His dad and he have been both uh, in cahoots and had their own falling out. So I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure I can see at his age and especially what happened to him at Mania. I don't know that there's a place for Shane long term uh, or that that would make for the best television for Endeavor's dollars. I think the McMahons might be wise enough to take a back seat and not make themselves the center of programming as they used to do when they ran the everything right. about the show. So, uh, yeah, I think at this point, you know, the only creative we're going to see is Triple H coming out and pushing or doing some goofy like DX thing. But he's going to push his NXT kids and he'll do some goofy uh, DX thing with Sean. But other than that, we're not going to see. We're de- I definitely not seeing Stephanie on air. <laughs> Shane, Shane may show up on a special occasion to do something <laughs> unintentionally goofy. <laughs> yeah, but but I I think our days of scrappy Shane McMahon, you know, the untrained wrestler going up against like the likes of like Steve Blackman in crazy hardcore matches and all that, that was good back in the day for Shane. Not so much now. Not so no. much. Uh, obviously WrestleMania uh, didn't really work out so well for him. That might've been the sign that uh, his in-ring days are done. Um, Doug, one thing we can safely presume and that this is uh, at the end of the day, being a business going to lead to layoffs. That's what occurs Mm -hmm. when companies merge. Uh, Many of us know this from personal experience Um, for UFC slash WWE. This is most likely going to fall on the offices where there are going to be Mm -hmm. roles and positions that will be combined. There's going to be redundancies. There are going to be, you know, HR folks and PR folks and accounting folks and all the back end folks that it take the production folks, who knows how many that they might be able to, to to share. Um, There's just going to be a lot of combinations. uh, And I imagine Stanford is right now where Mm -hmm. the most nerves are uh, in WWE. Um, That almost is not even speculation. That's almost a certainty because that's what big companies do when they merge and get these valuations. It's like, how do we get this, this, how do we get this company's profits up? First thing we do is we we cut what we consider redundancies, and that's office. Right. Stuff. Yeah, we don't need we don't need a redundancies of services. So that could see you know payroll, HR, contracts, legal, you know, being combined. That's a lot of people. That it's a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. So that is going to be the next real big story once the sale goes is how long it takes before the massive pink slips start flying. Um, but outside of very nervous office staff. Let's talk about the men and women who do the actual wrestling. Obviously, you're not going to be able to, you know, bring over your UFC folks and and put them in the ring for Raw or vice versa. So in some ways, you think they're more protected than office staff. But there is reportedly nervousness backstage, especially amongst those men and women who Triple H brought back during Vince's absence. Do you think they have reason to worry? And will we see talent layoffs again in WWE the way that they were back in the old days? I'm going to say, unfortunately, yes, I do think they have reason to worry. I do not think we'll see like massive cuts, though, where we see like, you know, uh, uh, rosters just gutted. I don't think we'll see that. We'll see some thinning, uh, a, a culling of talent, I think, but not. Not to those massive layoff days. I, I hope not anyway. I think that's going to come, like we just said, more from the front office than the on-air talent. But, I mean, it sucks that any of these people are going to be losing their jobs. But and, uh, this you know, is... some of the some of the folks that Vince let go were folks that he either didn't see anything in or maybe even had personal issues with. So if I yeah. was that person and, and Triple H and Triple H is my boy and we're good and he brought me back, I definitely would see a – someone who is historically known to be both vengeful and petty uh, when Mm -hmm. the opportunity comes to, Oh, they're asking us to find some money here. Hey, uh, you appreciate you being back the last six months, but I was right the first time. And now you're (laughs) a pal. (laughs) Best of luck in your future endeavors. (laughs) Lastly, Doug, let's look outside of the sphere of WWE and just touch on what this sale means for the sport of professional wrestling as a whole, in particular, the number two promotion, AEW. Does this change anything for the overall wrestling landscape? And in particular, does this change anything for Tony Khan? So WWE's pockets are deeper now, which is definitely a thing. You know, deep pockets have, you know, 
will make for a larger war chest. I'm mixing my metaphors now, but I mean, the con. You know, are you saying MJF is doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, bidding war in 2024. That's the yeah. thing, man, because they're going to have more money. I mean, Tony seems to be negotiating some very good deals, and I think they're going to be having a very lucrative TV deal uh, coming up. So, do you think this like puts the pressure on him to do that stuff now? and lock yes. folks up before Absolutely. the WWE sale goes through and they have maybe mad money to go get who they wanted from AEW just to hurt the number two. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think Tony is also waiting for that axe to fall, the axe to swing again, so he can scoop up even some more talent. Because <laughs> I would still love to see, you know, Karen Cross, you know, across the room or, you know, from, oh, maybe Samori Doe. That'd be great. <laughs> So you think Rising Tide will sell boats? Do you think that uh, that if uh, this sale and if Tony is able to swing the, because he does seem like he's about to make a big announcement, uh, but do you he's think that answer. that once you get that and the new TV rights deal and things in place that everyone's going to benefit from this? So I am not by nature an optimistic person. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love that. Yes. <laughs> Continue. You met me. You met me, right? I know you a little bit. <laughs> However, I, I want to be optimistic about this. That you know, we get back almost to some of those like early, like uh, Monday Night War days. Even though we're not, you know, Monday nights. Uh, but I think a rising tide could lift all boats. I would hope that it does. But again, at the end of the day, I'm I'm more pessimistic or more pragmatic about things. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to hedge my bets a bit, too. I think overall, is this better than the limbo of, hey, Vince is out, but now we have this makeshift team in place that we love on the creative side doing things. But long term, financially long term, I think this is probably good for the business of WWE and probably starts these bidding wars. So it will be good for the men and women who do professional wrestling, especially yeah. when you have another billionaire on the other side. It's not like you have somebody who... Uh, like an ECW situation, you're going to crush a company uh, that can't compete with you. You got someone else who's going to have uh, ridiculous uh, money mm -hmm. to play with as well. So I think overall, um, this may be a good thing. The 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 hedge of my bet would be just how long Vince McMahon himself manages to stay alive, and how right. how long he manages to get back into creative and end up in a in a spot that had. You know, a few of us, uh, more than a few of us, uh, a little pessimistic about WWE overall before. Uh, we've been mostly optimistic after his departure. So that creative side is the thing that gives me a bit of pause to call it an overall good thing. I'm predicting another 20 years of uh, of McMahon creative. <laughs> He's not going anywhere, pal. He's not going anywhere. I mean, his mom's, mom was like 103 or something like that, right? <laughs> it's the evil gene, man. You can't kill it. <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't say that about his mother on Mother's Day. She might have been a lovely woman. Um, <laughs> but with that, Doug, <laughs> I just trashed Vince McMahon's mother on Mother's Day. I don't even wow. know her. <laughs> I think I'm just, I'm making you my performer of the week with that. <laughs> Let me just scratch this. Was... this. Oh, you are now my performer of the week. I finally. Kevin, Kevin, you are the man. <laughs> Dude, big finish time. <laughs> that was a fun topic. I, I hated that we were not on the air at the time that the sale happened, but in some ways, having the several weeks after Mania for us to recharge our batteries, come back in, way more is known now than was at the time. Uh, and I think it allowed us to have what I hope uh, everyone who's watching agrees is a, a, a pretty thorough discussion on just what all this means. It's not just a sale of WWE. There's a lot of things um, that that this means for all of wrestling uh, and a lot of things we don't even know yet uh, that, that are still going to come to pass as a result of what is the biggest wrestling story of our lifetimes. And with that, Doug, we will go big finish time. We'll, we'll I will let you start finish. my friend. Well, I've already, already watched. Out. I've already, oh, no, I'm, I'm going, I'm going with MVP. I, I had Roman Reigns here for that cool stuff he was doing on SmackDown and talking and, and everything, but nope, you are now my MVP for this week <laughs> on a wrestling show for talking trash about Vince McMahon's mother. Is she, she has passed away, hasn't she? Or is she still alive? I'm, I'm I presuming she, she has. 
I don't know. She might be Vince McMahon's possibly dead mother on Mother's Day. I I can't. All right. <laughs> so I'll go perform. I'll do performer of the week then, and 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 I will cover you here uh, because it's exactly what I was going to to have performer of the week. It's it's not Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. That's the problem. It's your brothers. brothers. That's the yeah. problem. So once again, our tribal chief and the whole bloodline, a special uh, shout, obviously, to Paul Heyman. We have turned the page. Yes, we have another match coming up at the pay-per-view, but this has definitely now been positioned in such a way of, you can't do this. Let, let me and Solo go do this. The, the story now is definitely all about pitting the brothers against each other for their cousin's affection and that is going to be what leads to the ultimate downfall of the bloodline with the tribal chief at the head of the table. But it was masterfully pulled off uh, on SmackDown this past week, for sure. It was. It was indeed. Doug, how about your botch of the week? So I touched on this a little early in the show. Sometimes I do a bit of foreshadowing. Sometimes I just you know come straight out and spoil my, spoil our big finish <laughs> during the news. But you know, Tony Khan must stop making announcements about announcements and making announcements that are just ridiculous in and of themselves that, you know, he's got to stop. You know, he's, he's, he's already that boy that cried wolf in wrestling. He's, I've got an announcement coming up later tonight about a show. that's going to come on later tonight. <laughs> Man, I wish we hadn't done our performer of the week already. Cause I want to make you my performer of the week now for that excellent call out. <laughs> I love AEW, but come on. To, and Tony is very entertaining live. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, he is. Me. Yeah, I, and I love everything that Tony has done for wrestling. But come on, man. I get it. You're, you're trying. You you got your inner carny released, and, and that beast is out there trying to hype up everything. But come on, man. You can do better. You can be, do better hype than that. I've seen your life. I, I you don't know, need to make announcements. I know that the uh, – early days of AEW, Tony was very much like, I'm not going to be the McMahons. I don't need to be the center of this. I don't need to be on TV every week. And for the first half of the AEW creative uh, life of the company, he held true to that. I think there might be a, a bit of uh, narcissism that all billionaire wrestling guys have. Uh, <laughs> but, like this is so much fun. I want to be on air. And yeah, less is more with Tony. Like there are oh, certain yeah. things like, Hey, how about Ring of Honor? Like, oh, okay, that's pretty big. Um, honestly, the announcement they're going to have about Collision, even though we all know it's coming, that's big enough that you bring out your CEO and you let him make the announcement. But the whole, like, hey, here's Adam Cole to talk about AEW Unscripted, or this one was my botch of the week as well. Let me get on TV to tell you my special announcement is next week. I'm going to have a special announcement. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> That's, a, that's ridiculous. You don't need that. It was actually enough to tease it with Miro and uh, Thunder Rosa showing up and us yeah. all knowing what that means. Uh -huh. And then you can, you know, blast it all over social media this week. Big special announcement yes. coming Wednesday. Don't take Absolutely. Tony's time, put him on TV, and you think you're getting the announcement now only to hype it for the following week. Bad play. And you and you're just taking and you have just taken time TV time away from a very bloated, very talented roster. You know, that you could have stuck something in there for. But anyway. Speaking of sticking things in things. No, this isn't back to Matt Riddle. This is match <laughs> of the week, Doug. <laughs> All right, man. So well, hold on. Tony Botch, Kevin MVP. All right, man. <laughs> so I saw a match this week that I didn't know I needed to see, but I saw AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, and Edge in a ring, in a triple threat that was just so much fun. And then, yes, there were a couple little slip-ups, you know, a little botchy in, in spots, but for the most part, so much fun. And just for the fun factor of this, it, it, it's my match That's of the week. That's your match of the week? Yes. There were at the beginning some of those like overly acrobatic spots that were so like obvious, like uh, let me lay over here so that you can do yes. the flippy thing. Yes. But it's a couple of legends in addition to, uh, well, actually, uh, you could look at them and say they're all uh, oh, legends. Yeah. 
but and they were having fun doing it. So yeah, it, it was a great match. My match of the week is one I would not necessarily call fun, <laughs> uh-huh. but Mo- Moxley versus Kenny Omega. Oh, yeah. yeah. That match, uh, I know that uh, Moxley's hardcore style is not for everyone. Then we get the uh, one I said, sticking things into people. I'm thinking the screwdriver to the forehead by Don Callis. How could you? But it's kind of hard to have the Bucks in Kenny Omega's face when you have a slimy, obvious heel. Like it'd be like trying to turn the bloodline face and then Paul Heyman still be Paul Heyman. Like Don is, he's Don't Cyrus the Virus up. from the old ECW days. Like, so that needed yeah. to happen. Yeah. That needed to happen. But the match that all like took place before that, right up to the V-trigger that led them both colliding brutally through that cage. Uh, of course, both of them bleeding like stuck pigs, which of course is, you know, how Moxley wakes himself up in the morning, I believe. But it was brutal. And again, <laughs> Renee just forks him in the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he eats breakfast and then when he's done, he just does that like over and over again. <laughs> it was a great match, man. It was just really uh, a brutal uh, encounter between two main eventers, and I loved every minute of it. It felt like a pay per view match and not just a TV match. Well, I would never argue with an AEW match getting uh, your match of, of the week. Good stuff to see, folks, and Absolutely. a lot to talk about. So we appreciate you sticking with us uh, here. We are back next Sunday, Doug. We're doing double duty because the following week we're going to be off. It is the long weekend, but it is also our normal Don't Sunday night show will one, come opposite. Two? Yeah. Two we have two pay-per-views in one weekend. <laughs> on Memorial, on, on, on the holiday weekend, we'll have uh, WWE doing Night of Champions, which is really afternoon of champions for those of us in the United States. <laughs> Uh, and then AW the next night will be double or nothing. So we are going to preview both of those in a two for one next week. And then we return to our live broadcast on June 4th. And I'll give you a little hint on what that show is going to be. We kind of touched on it earlier about all the people that should be nervous. We're going to look at all the Triple H's um, rehires, every last one of his nice. rehires. And which ones, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, have been successful returns or who are still lost in the shuffle and probably need to worry. So that'll be uh, in June, but next week we're going to do uh, pay-per-views. We're going to preview and set up two of them for you. And Doug, that's our show for this week. That's good because this old man's tired. I think I'm ready for a nap. (laughs) Go to bed, everyone. (laughs) Call your mother first. Happy Mother's Day. See you guys. See ya.